What's up, everybody? It is your boy, Theo Williams, and we are here at Pensacon, and I am joined by Tony Isabella. He is the man that created a show, listen, Black Lightning, Gulf Coast CW. I love it. Thank you so much for creating that show. Well, to be honest, I created the character, but it was the brilliant Salim and Mar Brock Akio who created the TV show. Uh, but they, they were very respectful of my vision. Uh, I was a consultant. Uh, they flew me in to talk to the writers. Uh, the whole, everybody on the show, cast, crew, everybody, treated me like family. Uh, so it was, a, the show was a great experience for me. And what was your vision exactly for the Black Lightning um, character? Black Lightning, Jefferson Pierce, because I actually created Jefferson Pierce before I came up with the superhero part of his identity. Uh, there are three things important to Jefferson Pierce his family, his students, and his community. And that is obviously on display in the Black Lightning TV show. Uh, Black Lightning is not the guy who's going to be Batman's new Robin. Mm -hmm. no, no matter how often DC Comics tries to squeeze him into that role. He's his own guy, and those are the things important to him. They told stories that were topical, as I tried to do in the comic books. Um, and they really gave a feeling of black excellence in the show which was my goal when I created the character. I wanted a really positive role model for the younger readers. You know, and, and especially as a young black person myself, you know, there weren't many black characters that I could relate to. There weren't a lot of ca characters on TV that I could relate to. So that was something that was very inspiring, very special the, for me. The, the secret origin of Black Lightning is that I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, which was very segregated. My first black friends were comic book fans who came from the east side of Cleveland to the west side of Cleveland to attend my comic club meetings. And I thought it was very unfair that my black friends didn't have more characters like them. So I told myself if I ever got into comics, I was going to try to work with black characters and create black characters. And at Marvel, I wrote Luke Cage, I wrote The Falcon, I created Misty Knight, who appeared on the Luke Cage TV show. Uh, I took a character ca called Bill Foster and turned him into Black Goliath. Uh, so basically it was my, my three buddies that inspired me to, to make that a focus of my comic book writing. And I got to say, once again, I thank you so much personally, on a personal level, for doing that. And then as a representative of Gulf Coast CW, that show wouldn't be possible if it weren't for the character that you created. That, so thank you so much from my very perspective. Welcome. <laughs> and here's my question also, with the Black Lightning character, why Black Lightning? What was the inspiration with the lightning part? Okay, so I created everything about Jefferson Pierce and his world, and about an hour before the meeting in which I was pitching him to DC Comics, I realized, oh, I just created a superhero. I have no clue what a superhero identity is. <laughs> so I'm walking around the DC offices, and this is like an hour before the meeting. I pop into Julie Schwartz's office, and there's a cover-up of a Wonder Woman cover in which she's lassoing a black lightning bolt and saying something like, Hera, help me stop this black lightning <laughs> from destroying the city. And it's the 70s, I'm going, black lightning, that's catchy. Yeah. And that's where the name and the electrical powers came from. Just Tony Isabella thinking on his feet <laughs> with, with, with a meeting an hour away. That is really cool. I love that story. Um, so. Just real quick, um, was there any kind of uh, blowback or any kind of issues creating that character? You know, because it was the 70s and... I tell you, it was, it was a rough time for black characters in comics only because we didn't have the comic shops yet. And there were distributors down south and elsewhere that would not distribute comic books with black characters as oh. the leads. So it was a risk we took, but it paid off. Uh, I will say that over the years I've had people come up to me, hug me with tears in their eyes because Black Lightning was the first time they saw themselves in a comic book. And I credit the generation of writers I was in, you know, Roy Thomas, Don McGregor, Stanley, even though he was older than the rest of us, um, Marv Wolfman, Len Wein, uh, all these guys who wanted to diversify comics. And so I grew up I started in the industry with a generation of like-minded writers who wanted to do this. And in the 70s, there were really no black comic book writers. They didn't start coming along until late 70s, early 80s. Wow. 
Okay, well, I really appreciate you breaking all that down. Maybe we can get a Black Lightning movie one day and we can have Tony Isabella writing on it. <laughs> well, that would be nice. I never got a chance to write for the show, but I, I did a cameo. Uh, Trevor Von Eden, who was the original artist and I, were judges in the third season finale. Wow, that's cool. I'm gonna have to, we won't have to check that out. The third season finale, you can right. catch the Black Lightning creator, Tony Isabella. Thank you so much for joining oh, us here. Happy to do this. I really appreciate you. Well, once again, guys, we are live here at Pensacon 2022. Make sure you make your way down here. It's your boy, Theo Williams. Oh, one final question. How are you enjoying Pensacon? I, this is about my sixth or seventh year here. It is my favorite convention. Great city, great fans, great convention. I'll come back as often as they invite me. Well, you heard it from the man himself. <laughs> come on down to Pensacon 2022. We're having a great time, man. Meet Tony Isabella, the creator of Black Lightning. Hope to see you.